Hello, welcome to Promicon. My name is Hans Konrads and I am the CEO and founder of Promicon. Today we will talk about your process. And the process I want to focus on in this uh, series is power generation, especially steam generation in coal-fired and biomass-fired boilers. So if you are running a power station, you're running a big boiler, I want to address the most neglected measurement that you have in your station, and that is airflow measurement. Many people don't realize how important airflow measurement in the power generation business is. And the measurement is very much neglected because people have tried to work around the problems that they have. So to start, let's have a look at where you have airflow measurement. In this picture here, you can see the typical boiler. And you can see all the individual airflows that there are. You have primary airflow to your pulverizer. You have secondary airflow to your burners. In all modern boilers, you have overfire airflow for the NOx reduction. So these main constituents are not only three types of airflow, but you have 20 burners. You have 30 burners, right? So we're looking at 30, 50 or 60 individual flows of airflow. In a large boiler, you have several million cubic meter of airflow per hour. One of your big power consumption drains in your power station are your fans. So it's not only a matter of combustion, it's also a matter of power usage. Are you having the right airflow on each of your burners and on each of your overfire airports? That's what I want to focus on today. Now, in order to approach this problem properly, we first have to uh, realize one thing. Every big powered boiler has an air heater. This air heater is a so-called regenerative air heater. So it's rotating. It's rotating from the hot flue gas where it catches the heat into the cold fresh air that's preheated before it enters the boiler. In this process, you're not only heating up your air, but you're also carrying over a lot of the ash that you have from your combustion process from the hot side to the cold side. <clears throat> the ash carryover that you have is a monster problem. Because not only your ducts are full with uh, preheated air that contains little amounts of ash, this ash is really blocking your impulse lines that you have in all of your airflow measurements. And these airflow measurements therefore don't work properly. And many of you have operators who are operating the plant, who are operating the boiler, and the operators very often do not understand which airflow measurement is working and which one is not working because it's very difficult to understand. And I would like to have a closer look and explain this first issue. Why do you not see the problem of your airflow measurement? Let's have a look. This slide shows you how an airflow measurement is more normally working. You have an, a venturi or an aerofoil or some form of tapered section in a duct and you measure the static and the dynamic pressure across this section. Now, according to the Bernoulli equation, you calculate the mass flow that goes over this uh, venturi or airfoil. Now, the first thing for you as engineers, how much pressure drop are you measuring? How much differential pressure are you measuring on this location? Well, I would say about 20 millibar, is that correct? 16 millibar? Not much. Not much. If you think about the fact that the barometric pressure where your power station is located is about a thousand millibar. So you have a thousand millibar and on top of that you are measuring a small differential pressure to calculate the airflow that you have in your duct. Now as long as the impulse lines are free and there is no problem with the pressure transmission from your duct to your DP transmitter, we're all good. But what do you do if one of your um, impulse lines gets blocked? Yeah? The ash gets pozzolanic, it starts to clog up the impulse line. You go through a cycle of a boiler on and off, so you go through the dew point, the ash becomes very like a little bit of concrete. 
and it completely blocks your impulse line. You all know this problem. Everybody of you has had this problem once in a while. Well, what happens if you have two impulse lines and one is blocked? Then your pressure transmitter starts to measure against the changes of barometric pressure. So let's say you have the sunshine and you have a thunderstorm coming. Barometric pressure changes from 1013 millibar to 1000 millibar. You lose 13 millibar. All of a sudden your DP transmitter can also, is also affected by this change. And this is when your measurement starts to drift. So now you think, okay, if my measurement is starting to drift, the operator will tell me. But the operator doesn't tell you because he can't see it. Look at this picture. In this picture you can see that we have a delta pressure measurement. But you can also see that the delta pressure measurement is used to control a damper. Yeah? The damper to the burner, the damper to the mill. So what your operator sees is not the true delta P measurement. What he sees is a controlled value. Hmm? If your measurement starts to drift, your DCS system will open up the damper a little bit more so that the DP measurement gets to the set point again. So what your operators are really seeing are measurements that are controlled to a set point. Right? So you have 20 burners, you have 20 measurements, They're all the, they are all the same. So your operator says, well, they're all the same, they look good, right, don't they? They're not good because all your dampers are in a different position. Let's have a look at the following picture that illustrates this problem very well. This is a trend that we got from a power station in Germany and we have many of these trends from power stations around the world. It's always the same problem. Let's have a look. What we can see in this picture are two trends. The first trend is the upper trend, it's the dark blue line. And the lower trend, the light blue line, that's the second trend. Now the first trend is the DP value. That's what your operator sees when he's operating the boiler. What do you see? You see a line that's a little bit noisy, right? Then you see a point in the middle of the picture where this line is, where the, where the, where the impulse line is purged, it's cleaned, and after that the line is less noisy. But before and after it has the same value. So if you ask your operator, does it have a drift? He would say, no, it's no drift. It's the same before and after. The line below, that light blue line, that's the damper position. Do you see that? The damper position before and after cleaning is not the same. It changes. So you have a damper at 45 degrees, you clean your measurement, and then all of a sudden it's at 50 degrees, and the measurement value is the same. What does it tell you? Exactly. It tells you, you that you do have a problem. You had a drift before you cleaned. And all these problems are concealed measurement problems, right? So let's say you're a boiler engineer. You're sitting somewhere in the world, South Africa, Asia. You wonder why you have CO in your boiler, why you have high unburned carbon, why your NOx values are not right. Because the air flows to 20 of your burners are not correct and you can't see that they are incorrect, right? That's what this picture is telling you. Have a look at the next trend. This is typical. This is a brand new 800 megawatt boiler. One of the most modern boilers in Europe. And this is what we see. Same problem. The red line is the delta P. The blue line on top is the damper. Can you see that before and after cleaning, the damper has a different position, but the measurement value is the same. So, this is the problem of what we call analog measurement. And these measurements that you have in your plant are in thousands of plants around the world. Thousands. Now, Promicon, we have developed a digital measurement. Our measurement is different. How is our measurement different? Let's have a look. Our measurement is not measuring the delta pressure. What we are measuring is the time of flight of the gas, especially the dust that the gas is carrying from one sensor to a second sensor. So we have two sensors and we measure the time of flight between sensor one and sensor two to come up with the velocity of the gas. So instead of having the dust as an enemy that's coming from the air heater, we have the dust as a friend. We use the dust as a tracer of your gas velocity. Yeah. The way we do that is shown in this picture. 
you have the, des the, the dust on an antenna and the dust is actually producing an electric signal that we then record. How do we arrive at velocity? Very simple. Look at the next picture. We have two sensors that are mounted in a distance of about 350 millimeters. So the signal that we are catching up on the first sensor, which is very characteristic for the flow pattern of the gas, we will catch up at the second sensor only a few milliseconds later. Have a look at these two signals. Let's put them on top of each other. If you put these signals on top of each other, you will see with your, with your bare eye, they are very similar. But they are time shifted, right? So they are not at the same time. They're recorded at the same time, but their shape matches only after so much time shift. So what we do now is we put these signals into cross-correlation filter. And that digital filter calculates the statistical match at a certain time shift. And that time shift is the time of flight between your two sensors. In our example, 52.1 milliseconds. So what is our measurement doing? Our measurement gives you a digital time measurement. And out of this digital time measurement and the sensor distance, we calculate velocity. What is the big advantage of this? The biggest advantage for your problem that I've described today, drift stability. There is no drift. You can put this in and when you take it out or when you check it 10 years later, we will have the same accuracy. There will be no drift because our measurement is digital. It's a big difference to analog measurement. Yeah. I very often tell my clients, think of an old LP record, analog. If you make a scratch on that record, you will hear that scratch. Take a CD. If you will make a small scratch on the CD, you will not hear it because it's a digital system. The code will be completely reproduced even if there are small errors in it. And that's the same with our measurement. So what you can take away from this small video is if your people are complaining about mill instability, NOx, high unburned carbon, slagging problems, and if your operators tell you, I think my airflow is fine, don't believe them. Because your operators cannot see this. Your operators don't have the, they don't have the means to, to, to see behind the controlled value of your DCS. What you will find if you have a closer look is that your dampers are moving back and forth and your airflows are not doing what they're supposed to do. And if your airflows are not right, your combustion is not right. If you want further advice on this or further help, check our website. Talk to our team. You are not the only one in the world who has this problem. There are thousands of power stations who have exactly the same problem. And we have resolved this problem in hundreds and hundreds of applications. And we are very happy to help you with this as well. So don't hesitate. Call us and we will be very happy to resolve your problem. See you next time in our next video.